Today's integral is pretty interesting. The structure looks fairly simple, but appearances are indeed deceiving, and that fits perfectly on our integral today. Michael Penn evaluated it using some really nice tricks, and I'm going to adopt a different approach here. I'm going to use Feynman's trick. And in either case, the solution needs some exotic mathematics. So it is quite a beautiful integral. First things first, we call the integral we have i for reference purposes. And we need to define an integral function. And it turns out that there is a very special function that can play the part for the target case. And that special function is the beta function with complex arguments u and v. Now this is defined as twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine to the 2u minus 1 of x times sine to the 2v minus 1 of x dx. Now how exactly do I generate the target integral from the beta function? Well that's easy. All I have to do is differentiate this partially with respect to u. So that means I have twice the partial derivative of this integral. And we know that this integral converges for all values of u and v in the domain of the beta function. So that means we can switch up the order of the integration and the differentiation operators, and we have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the partial derivative with respect to u of the cosine to the 2u minus 1 of x times sine to the 2v minus 1 of x dx. Carrying out the differentiation, we have twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of this constant term of sine to the 2v minus 1 of x times the repeated function cosine to the 2u minus 1 of x times the logarithm of this constant base that is cosine x. And because of the chain rule on differentiation of the 2u minus 1 term, we have an extra factor of 2. So we have 4 times this integral. Okay, so we got one of the log cosine terms, but we need the squared logarithm of the cosine of x. So that means we have to take the second derivative with respect to u. And again, I'll get a factor of 2, so that gives me 8 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2. Again, these two are repeated. Cosine to the 2 u minus 1 of x times now the squared logarithm of the cosine of x dx. Okay, we're pretty close. All that's left to do is get rid of these two over here. And that's also pretty easy. Also, I, all I have to do is just plug in v equal to u equal to 1 half because that gives me exponents of zeros. So this implies that the second derivative with respect to u equals 8 times our target integral i. And all that's left is to evaluate the derivative on the left-hand side of this equation. And for that, we need the help of the gamma function. We know that the beta and gamma functions are related by beta uv equal to gamma u times gamma v divided by gamma u plus v. So differentiating partially with respect to the u variable gives me gamma v outside as a constant, and I just have to apply the quotient rule to everything's everything that's left. So we have gamma u plus v times gamma prime u minus gamma prime u plus v times gamma u all divided by the square of the gamma function at u plus v. And I have to differentiate this one more time and that's going to look like an absolute mess. Thankfully we can clean this up using the digamma function so we know that di gamma s equals gamma prime s divided by gamma s, and this implies that gamma prime s equals di gamma s times gamma s, and this implies that partial beta by partial u equals gamma v times... I can factor out a lot of the stuff because of the derivatives involved. So gamma prime u is just di gamma u times gamma u. So that means I can factor out a gamma u term. And I can also similarly factor out a gamma u plus v term. We're dividing by the square of the gamma function evaluated at u plus v. And we have di gamma u minus di gamma u plus v left. 
Okay, so after some cancellation, we realized that this is just the beta function again. So we have beta function at u and v being multiplied by di gamma u minus di gamma u plus v. Okay, so that's the first derivative and it looks a lot more friendlier. I wouldn't mind differentiating this anymore. So yeah, we have the second derivative now. Using the product rule, we have the derivative of the beta function again with respect to u times di gamma u minus di gamma u plus v plus the beta function multiplied by the derivative of the di gamma function. Now the derivative of the di gamma function is what's called the tri gamma function that is psi sub 1. So we have psi sub 1 of u minus psi sub 1 that is tri gamma u plus v. So yeah, this is really cool stuff. We started with the beta function, then the gamma function, then the di gamma function, and now we're on to the tri gamma function. This is really awesome. Anyway, so uh, what exactly did I need? I needed the derivatives evaluated at u equals to v equal to one half. So I have this equation already for the derivative of the beta function, so let's make good use of it. We have partial beta by partial u at these values of u and v. So that will give me the beta function at 1 half and 1 half multiplied by di gamma 1 half minus di gamma 1 half plus 1 half is just 1. So let me just expand everything in terms of the gamma function. We have gamma 1 half times gamma 1 half divided by gamma 1 times some stuff, but first up, these two are root pi's. So multiply them in the numerator, you just get pi, and gamma 1 is just 1, so we have pi outside. And di gamma 1 half means gamma prime 1 half divided by gamma 1 half, and di gamma 1 just means gamma prime 1 divided by gamma 1. And I wrote out an Instagram post a while ago, link in the description below, detailing the calculations of some important derivatives of the gamma function. So do check that out. I use them a lot, so I just decided to make a post on it so that I can just keep referring to it. So we have pi times, you'll see in the post that this here is negative root pi times Euler Mascheroni plus log 4 divided by gamma 1 half is just root pi. Then this here is negative Euler Mascheroni constant divided by 1. So we have some cancellation, we have pi, we have negative Euler Mascheroni and positive Euler Mascheroni. I really hate to see Euler Mascheroni boy go, but it's just how the evaluation goes, unfortunately. So this is the beta function's derivative with respect to u at the required values of u and v. So we know the first of these terms sorts out to negative pi times log 4, and this here is di gamma 1 half minus di gamma 1, which according to our calculations, the calculations we just carried out for this term, this would sort out to negative log 4. So that means on multiplication, we have pi times the squared logarithm of 4, plus beta 1 half and 1 half, which we just saw evaluates out to pi. Then we have these tri gamma functions. We need tri gamma function evaluated at 1 half minus tri gamma function evaluated at 1. And these values of the tri gamma function are pretty easy to figure out using its series expansion, which we can derive using the series expansion for the di gamma function. So di gamma s plus 1 equals negative Euler Mascheroni constant plus the sum over k, the positive integers, of 1 by k minus 1 by k plus s. So on differentiation with respect to the parameter s, we have tri gamma s plus 1 equal to the sum over the positive integers k of 
1 by k plus s squared, where the negative signs cancel out on differentiation, of course. So for trigamma 1, we need s equal to 0. So that means we have the sum over k of 1 by k squared, which we identify as the famous basal identity, pi squared by 6. Okay, cool. And for s equal to, we need tri gamma 1 half, right? So that means s should be negative 1 half. In that case, you have the sum over k of 1 by k minus 1 half squared. And that gives us 4 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k minus 1 squared. Alrighty then, so that's the sum of the reciprocals of the squared odd integers, which again we can derive using the basal identity. So we know that pi squared by 6, that's the sum over k of 1 by k squared. This can be decomposed into sums over even and odd integers. So for the even, for the sum over the even integers, we have the sum over k of 1 by 2k squared plus the sum over k, now starting at 0 to include the, the uh, reciprocal of 1 squared. And for the odd integers, we can write 2k minus 1 squared. So this is pi squared by 6, and the first term here can be written as 1 fourth the sum over k of 1 by k squared, which is 1 fourth of pi squared by 6, plus the required sum, and on simplification, we have s equal to pi squared by 6 times 3 quarters. So that means we have uh, pi squared by 8. And we need 4 times the sum for tri gamma 1 half. So that sorts out to pi squared by 2. With the power of our newfound knowledge, we return to the equation and write this as pi times log square 4 plus pi times tri gamma 1 half sorted out to pi squared by 2 minus pi squared by 6 for tri gamma 1. Now, what exactly is 1 half minus 1 by 6? Just give me a minute. I'm bad at math. So that would be a uh, 1 by 3, correct? Anyway, pi cubed by 3. That's the second derivative with respect to u. But recall that the target integral i was, well, a times this integral was the partial derivative, the second partial derivative of the beta function with respect to u. So that means for our target integral, all we have to do is multiply by the reciprocal of 8, and we have pi by 8 times the squared log of 4 plus pi cubed by 24. And it would look a lot nicer if this was the logarithm of 2. So let's write this as pi by 2, 1 fourth of the squared logarithm of 4, which of course is 1 half times log 4 all squared. And we have this pi cubed by 24 term as well. And finally, we conclude that the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared logarithm of the cosine of x with respect to x is pi by 2 times log 2 squared plus pi cubed by 24, which is a pretty awesome result. And that solution development was really cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.